My name is Jennifer, and I'm going to be giving the communion thought today. So I was trying to think today of what I wanted to talk about, and I'd like to talk about how I think there's two aspects of communion. There's a physical aspect, and there's a spiritual aspect. And the physical aspect is the taking of the bread and the cup. And I think that's of vital importance. Um, number one, it reaches us back to Jesus over 2,000 years. This is our heritage. This is what we do to remember Jesus. This is what we do to remember who we are and what we stand for. And if we didn't do it on a regular basis, I think that would slip out of our minds. I think we would begin to forget what we stand for and why we're Christians and who Jesus was and how he redeemed us. I think the business, busyness of life would just start to uh, get in the way. And if we don't remind ourselves on a weekly basis or a regular basis, we just don't remember. I think that's why the physical part is so important. But to be honest, sometimes the physical part is about all I can muster on a Sunday. Um, since we've been doing online church, I have taken charge of the communion in our family. Um, generally, I try before church starts to get our communion supplies together. It doesn't always happen, but I try. Um, communion comes, we listen to the talk together, we listen to the prayer together, and then it's time to take the bread and the cup. So I hop up and I get crackers and I pass them out to everybody. And then I get our cup and we are a one cup family because I don't want to do all those extra cups, dishes. So um, I take the cup to everybody individually and wait for them to take their sip. And then I take my sip. And by the time that's done, communion's over. And um, a spiritual thought has not crossed my mind. There's been no centering for the week. There's no, been no meditating. It was just really basically a snack during our service. But again, I think that's so important to remind us of who we are and what we stand for. But then there's also the spiritual part of communion. And communion is um, it's an exchange of ideas, exchange of emotions, an exchange of feelings, um, both on a mental and a spiritual level. And my mental and spiritual level takes part at a different time or takes place at a different time than on Sunday mornings. About 12 years ago, um, I started having a lot of trouble sleeping. I would fall asleep really easy. I fall asleep in about 10 seconds and I sleep for a couple hours and then I would wake up and I would be up for two or three hours just tossing and turning and thinking and worrying. And at the beginning of all this, I confessed to a friend or I told her, you know, gosh, I just spend all night worrying about this. I can't get it out of my mind. I just worry and worry and worry and I can't sleep. And she said something which stuck with me ever since then and will for the rest of my life because it was so wise. She said, maybe God is calling you in the middle of the night to pray about whatever you're worrying about. Maybe he's waking you up so that you can come pray about it. I was, I, th I thought that was amazing. Um, so I did begin getting up in the middle of the night. And when I do wake up and I can't go back to sleep, I've been doing this for the last 12 years. I get up and I pray about whatever is bothering me. Um, I pray for my children. I feel like it's incredibly important that I stand in the gap for them. Um, I pray for my husband. I pray for you guys. I pray for any prayer requests that have been going on or anything that I know about. Um, but that is my time of prayer. And that is my time of communing. That's my time to commune with God. It's my time to talk to him. It's my time to be still in the quiet of the night and listen to him. It's my time for my spirit to f be stirred by him. Sometimes it's my time to be angry at him or be upset or tell him why I don't understand what's going on. I just don't get it. But that's my spiritual communion time. And I think that's really, really important. I think the physical is important, but I think the spiritual is also. So what I would like to leave you with today is um, if you, like me, um, 
can only do the physical part on Sunday mornings, and you can't hardly even scratch up anything spiritual. Maybe a quick, thank you, Lord, I so appreciate your, the gift of your son. That was amazing. If that's all you can come up with on a Sunday morning, I think that's okay. I really, really do. But I would urge you to try and find some time every week to really center yourself and to really spiritually commune with God. Maybe it's not Sunday morning. Maybe there's too much going on. Maybe it is the middle of the night. Maybe it's first thing in the morning while you're still laying in bed. Maybe it's the last thing at night before you lay your head down. But make sure that your commune is not just the physical, but it's also the spiritual. Make sure that you take some time to remember what God has given you and what he has done for you and when he has shown up for you. I think both of those are incredibly important. And I think both of those have their place in our rituals and in our in our Christian walk with God. So I'd really, really like to just let you think about that. Let you think about when do you do the physical part of communion and when this week are you gonna do the spiritual part? When are you really going to commune with God? So I'm gonna say a prayer now um, to bless this bread and this cup. Lord, I just am so grateful for who you are. I'm so grateful for how you saved us and how you sent your son to redeem us. I'm so grateful that you give us this reminder on a regular basis of, of who we are in you, Lord, and um, that you keep this in the front of our minds, that you don't let it slip away. And then it goes months and months without us even remembering anything about you, Lord. So thank you for this. And Lord, I just pray that we can also just take some time to have a spiritual communion with you, Lord, just to really talk with you, be with you, sit in silence before you, Lord. Thank you for both of those. In Jesus' name, amen. I would like to urge you, if you have any prayer requests, to go ahead and please put them in the chat. If you have any praise reports, please go ahead and put those in the chat too. But really, really, if you have prayers, please let us pray for you. I myself would be honored to pray for you. And I know many, many others in this congregation are just waiting to do that also. Um, when I get up in the middle of the night, I will bring you before the King of Kings and I will present your request to him. So please, please put that in the chat. We really, really want to hear from you. Thank you so much. <laughs>